but I can actually see some lone trees here, which is always photogenic. So when I was little, I always asked my mom and dad, like, please, let's go to some dinosaur museum. I want to go to natural history museum. Uh, it's snake season and we have venomous snakes in Korea. So there was an actual snake warning sign. Time to make some photos, finally. But these dinosaur things are very distracting. Yeah, it definitely knows I'm here, but it doesn't really give a... It doesn't really care. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today we came to Hwasong. Now, it's not my first time visiting here, it's actually my second time. Uh, I'll link the first video here, or here. Uh, back then I didn't even have my microphone, which is, you know, here. And, uh, I don't know, back then the weather was quite cold, I believe. Uh, it was December or January. Um, today we came here to find some lone trees or some any, any kind of composition, basically, um, on, the, on this uh, field that they have this field right next to the Dinosaur Museum, which I showed you in that video that I talked about. And I believe it's uh, also a fossil site as well. Uh, so let's get going. But first, we gotta visit the dinosaur museum, of course, because who doesn't love dinosaurs, eh? Okay, so that's the first ceratopsid dinosaur of this peninsula. Apparently, it's it's an ancestor species to Triceratops and Protoceratops, Coriaceratops. And they found this fossil, which is a fake here, but uh, still. And this is not fake. Dinosaur eggs. And oh, I believe that's actually the real fossil that they found. So they found some parts of this dinosaur. Yep. There we go. So I guess that's uh, hind legs or uh, the femur. I don't know. I'm not really. I don't really know the anatomy. And that's what it's supposed to look like fully. All right, so the museum is not that big. It's quite a small museum, but uh, it's ran by the government. So just thought might be interested to visit. Yeah, and more fossils, but uh, I guess I need to be quiet here. Anyways, uh, that's it for the museum, I guess. So it's quite a small museum. So I asked and apparently some bird photographer found the fossil actually accidentally they just he just uh he was there and he just found some strange rocks and he called the local geologist or paleontologist and figured out that it's actually a fossil of an unknown species and they named it korea ceratops hwasong ensis which is a cool name by the way because uh it's hwasong city here um so we're actually going to the fossil site which is located that way and that's where actually they found the fossil but i can actually see some lone trees here which is always photogenic so um uh, yeah let's go let's go there and thankfully uh it's not too hot so i can walk she said the the museum worker said it's it's gonna take like an hour to walk around so yeah hope to, let's hope that it's gonna be worth it all right let's pack our bags and uh pack our bags let's prepare our bags and everything and uh, walk for an hour to make some photos which is a short short trip kind of So you know, I'm actually a very big science nerd, especially 
when it comes to uh, paleontology or paleontology if you're from the States. Uh, I love dinosaurs, I love extinct animals. Um, and, you know, coming here, it's like a childhood dream because when I was little, I always asked my mom and dad, like, please, let's go to some dinosaur museum. I want to go to natural history museum. And, you know, <laughs> they're always busy, so they couldn't always bring me. But now that I have a car and I'm an adult, I can do whatever I want. So I can come back here whenever I want. And this place is quite amazing because not only it's photogenic, but it's also like a symbol of paleontology of Korea, you know? Because this is one of the biggest fossil sites of this country. So even though it's kind of barren and empty in my photographer's eyes, it looks quite photogenic. So I'm happy. I'm happy to be here. And I can already see some lone trees, which is always, always photogenic. Okay, so as I was coming here, I found two lone trees. Well, isolated trees right there, um, which I'm showing you on the B-roll right now. And one problem of those trees is that I can actually see the cars going behind, and that's not pretty. Also, it's overlapped by this uh, uh, layer of trees behind these these main two trees. So. When I, if I shoot it, then they won't look that prominent. Therefore, I just chose not to shoot them. I could just actually go around and shoot those trees somewhere else uh, from a different angle, but uh, it's snake season and we have venomous snakes in Korea. So there was an actual snake warning sign and I don't plan to get bitten by a snake. So yeah, I'm not going into this uh, grass field. So in my previous video, I asked you guys two questions um, about my repetitive vi video patterns and uh, number of my subscribers. And so many of you nicely uh, commented on the video and gave me a lot of support. And I'm really grateful. So thank you very much. You know, it feels like I've had this some kind of cancer in my body and suddenly it feels like it's just gone thanks to all those nice comments that uh, now I realize I have been doing things right and I feel like I'm on the right path now so I'm just gonna continue what I'm doing and maybe slowly I'll gradually improve um, on doing this YouTube thing and do you think that can be another composition that that tree right there, this one. Hmm. Um, I don't know. The background doesn't look so sexy. I'll just, yeah, I'll just pass. Anyways, so I just wanted to say thanks. Yeah, it's good to have such supportive subscribers when there's a praying mantis dead. Okay, sorry buddy, it's almost winter now. All right, anyways, onwards and upwards. All right, so we came to the fossil site. This is the fossil site, and you can't get in there, but it looks interesting. Geologically interesting, if that makes sense. And also, I found a lone tree. <laughs> yep, but I uh, can't get in there because there's no way and I don't want to get bitten by a snake but it looks quite amazing all right so we're at this another fossil site and it's rather interesting here they really did a good job um, it's like a live museum and I found a potential composition so time to make some photos finally but these dinosaur things are very distracting because I love dinosaurs. All right, so I think there's a potential composition here. Um, as you can see, that's the first fossil site that I, that I showed you. And from there, uh, I couldn't really find any compositions, but 
from here, the fossil site looks quite nice. It's like a, it's like Geo Island, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's, it looks like an island with uh, some colorful trees on it, and it's just right in the middle of this uh, nowhere. So that I think makes a good image. So I'm gonna use 24 to 105 and probably shoot it at 24 mil. Um, what I'm thinking is, I'm thinking about using these grass as my foreground interest. So there, they will be my first layer. And there are some red grasses that I don't know the name of. And they can be my second layer. And the third layer will be those uh, trees and the, the rock there, that island. So let's make the shot. All right. I don't think I'm going to include too much sky, but I need a little bit of height here. So, perhaps like that. All right, looks good. All right, so I'm gonna put this island on the top third of my frame. And I'm currently at ISO 100, F11 and 40th of a second. Now I'm gonna focus stack this. So first I'm gonna focus to that island there. Two second timer, there we go. And then the middle ground, which are these uh, red grass right there, and the closest point. And as always, when three shots are done, I make one black image to later tell myself that I need to focus stack these three images before the black shot. So when the photo's done, here's the shot. Even though I didn't capture the lone trees as they were not as photogenic as I'd hoped, this composition saved my day. I love the moody sky and the yellow to orange grasses filling the scene. The overall mood perfectly captures a cool overcast day just before the rain. Even though I truly believe in quality over quantity, Capturing just one photo after hours of driving and the long walk felt a bit disappointing. So I frantically tried to find more compositions, only to realize that sometimes you just have to accept your fate. Luckily though, fate had something in store to make up for a disappointing day. Okay, so we actually finished, but there is a male red start in its winter clothing or winter feathers. And I think I can shoot it, so. I need faster shutter speed. Three hundred twenty should do. Ah, beautiful. You know, red stars are really beautiful. Their colors, orange chest with white spot on their back. Looks absolutely cute. And that beep, 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 that mating call. It's also very distinctive. Okay, I think I might get a little bit closer because Korean birds are not that sensitive. And I hear a woodpecker somewhere. Um, woodpeckers are quite common, but red stars are also quite common too. But you don't want to miss the chance when you can shoot them. Yeah, it definitely knows I'm here, but it doesn't really give a, it doesn't really care. Beautiful. I'm like almost uh, probably like seven meters. Now six, very close, and it's not flying away. One nice thing about Korea is that because it's a small, densely populated country, the birds here aren't that skittish. They don't fly away easily, unless you get too close. This bird was no exception. It knew I was standing right in front of it and didn't even care. 
it just kept singing. So uh, that's it for today guys. Uh, I just checked all my photos of the Red Star and they all look really sharp and clean so I'm pretty sure uh, I made some good shots. You've already seen so <laughs> please uh, leave a comment below if you like it or not. And uh, I have a really important tip which is um, you know as always you want to keep your lenses clean so you always got to bring your lens cloth so you know just gently you know <laughs> clean your lens. And also the back of your camera because you know your oil from your nose is always there so there we go now it's clean uh so i hope this video wasn't too chaotic because i included some of my traveling uh video clips into this video but uh yeah i hope it wasn't too chaotic so anyways thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you like this video press the like button if you didn't like this video then press the dislike button but twice so thank you very much for watching and see you next time